Hey everybody, thanks for joining us for another episode of Adventures in Angular. Today on our panelists, we've got your servant Aaron Frost with Hero Devs. We've got Shai Resnick. Yo, 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 this is Shai Resnick from testangular.com, <laughs> uh, the, the site that te- teaches you uh, testing and, and React. So thank you, and uh, yeah. And we've got also a new panelist who's uh, not his first time as a panelist, but he's going to be on. A, he's going to start showing up regularly. We've got Brian Love. What's up, everybody? Woo! Brian, Welcome, Brian. Do a little intro. Hey, I'm Brian. I do this. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm an Angular GDE, so Google Developer Expert. I blog a lot at brianflove.com, and I'm an independent contractor working on a couple of different projects right now. So. And I've been slinging Angular for, I don't know, too long. <laughs> well, but too long? What, the interesting question is, what does Brian love? Like, what do you love to do outside of all the... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a good question. Um, I really enjoy uh, skiing. So I live in Denver, Colorado. And... Okay, we just <laughs> lost Brian. <laughs> yeah. The internet... We got a man down. We've got a man, man down. down. Man, man down. down. He's texting me, so he's not dead. Like, Denver's oh. still on the map. That's a lucky thing. Let's get to our guest, the one and only Sander Elias, uh, joining us today from Países Bajos. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, Sander. Hi, I'm Sander. I'm also an Angular GD. I work at Hero Devs with Aaron, and I created a couple of things. And my latest thing is Observable Forms, which we will be talking about a little bit later on. Cool. But the real interesting question is, what does Sander love? What That's do you love true. to do outside of like the technical stuff? Outside of the technical stuff? Oh, that's a hard question. I think I love my kids and my wife doing family stuff. Go, go out with the, with the gang. Yeah, good. <laughs> awesome. This episode is sponsored by Sentry.io. Recently, I came across a great tool for tracking and monitoring problems in my apps. Then I asked them if they wanted to sponsor the show and allow me to share my experience with you. Sentry provides a terrific interface for keeping track of what's going on with my app. It also tracks releases so I can tell if what I deployed makes things better or worse. They give you full stack traces and as much information as possible about the situation when the error occurred to help you track down the errors. Plus, one thing I love, you can customize the context provided by Sentry. So, if you're looking for specific information about the request, you can provide it. It automatically scrubs passwords and secure information, and you can customize the scrubbing as well. Finally, it has a user feedback system built in that you can use to get information from your users. Oh, and I also love that they support open source to the point where they actually open source Sentry if you want to self-host it. Use the code devchat at sentry.io to get two months free on Sentry's small plan. That's code devchat at sentry.io. So before we, we jump into the, like the technical stuff again, I, I want to bring this up uh, and, and, and talk about like uh, another topic before we, we get to the observable forms. Uh, ah, and we got Brian again. Hey, yeah, man, man back, man yeah, back. Yep. I'm back. <laughs> the internet reached uh, Denver again. <laughs> So, yeah, we had Astro. a minor cutout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Aaron, you wrote a post yesterday. Yeah. Well, I, I published it. I, I spent about a week writing it. So, yeah, Shy, you weren't at NGConf, which really. What? Yeah. yeah we missed you were it. there in spirit, though. A lot of us, you were probably the most talked about person that wasn't there. Um, nah. A lot of people talked about there. I didn't recall him being mentioned. At all. At all? <laughs> At all. <laughs> Sander was on a shy vacation. He just wasn't even paid. <laughs> uh, so, no, and at NGConf, uh, something happened, and, and I, I needed to apologize, so I, I published a blog post. But it might be good to kind of talk about it on the podcast, yeah? So, yeah, I gave a talk. I gave a talk with one of the other GDEs, Chris Noring, who's the author. He works at Microsoft. Smart, smart gentleman. Um. And we, we both have been frustrated by certain aspects of Redux. And we're like, hey, let's give a talk about it. Let's kind of help the... Uh... So I was like, yeah, let's, uh, let's do a talk about this. And let's, let's kind of help the community feel justified with their frustrations. you know. And in that talk, we said some things that we were, we were super not clear 
we were very vague and and everyone interpreted it, what we said pretty much the same way and um it was what we were thinking we meant but now that we look back at it chris and i were like oh yeah that was obviously the only way they could have interpreted what we said and so and what we said made it look like we were attacking three of my favorite people which is mike ryan brandon roberts and rob um wait you said four people now mike, mike ryan, oh, yeah. ryan brandon yeah. and uh and Roberts. I normally don't trust people that have two first names as their name. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like and like like with Shai Resnick, those are both first names. Shai and Resnick. Yeah. I don't trust yeah. like that. You don't trust it. Yeah. No. And uh with uh yeah, so Mike Ryan, yeah, Mike, Mike Brandon and Rob. Um actually Rob Wormald's the first name too, right? Yeah, Wormald. You know what the, by the way, what Resnick means in Hebrew? Let's hear it. Unsubscribe. <laughs> oh, I figured llama. No, not llama. No, don't don't be crazy. <laughs> okay, just to give like you know, when I read the post and 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 I I haven't watched the 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 talk before that, and then I I, I mm-hmm. watched it. So you gave a talk, uh, you and Chris, um, about a very. S- important thing uh, i think which is the uh, criticism about people who just pick up a tool and don't bother to study it thoroughly and use it and and then end up with lots of problems and, and blame you know everyone you know who who wrote the tool who suggests to use it to all that stuff and like the herd mentality instead of like uh, having your own opinion or forming your own opinion. And this was like the main message behind your talk. That's what I got from it. But I could see how uh, keeping it maybe too vague, you know, maybe send the wrong message that you might well, be attacking or something like that. Uh, yeah, we, we were vague. And then the very last slide, we we posted a screenshot of a tweet from from rob right and um so when we did that that was in our mind unrelated but when we posted that tweet it kind of made a direct tie it kind of undid the vagueness we'd already done and it made what everyone was already thought we were saying even more true to them you know like oh not only do i think they're attacking rob but now they put a tweet of rob up and so like, yeah, it kind of closed the loop on any doubts about what we were saying. And it made it pretty concrete that we were attacking Rob and Mike and Brandon. And, and I saw it mm-hmm. and I felt bad. And I mean, if anyone knows Rob or Mike or Brandon, I want you to imagine that you just attacked them and you really hurt their feelings. Okay. They're really nice to people. Like they're insanely nice. And I had to look them in the eyes and knew that I'd cause a lot of hurt for them. And I just, I lost my composure pretty immediately. And um, I just, uh, I didn't know how to say enough words to tell, let them know how much I loved them and how sorry I was. And so we got, we got through those conversations in, in a really, really friendly way, which just points to how great they are, to be honest, because those conversations could have been it's extremely difficult and the hurt could have been long lasting. It, it could have been more hurt that lasted longer, but they were gracious. I don't know another word to say besides gracious. So once I got done with that, I, I said, you know, there's two things I need to do, Shy. I need to apologize to everyone else who just watched me attack them because I might have scared a lot of people from being willing to submit to speak at a conference because they don't want to be attacked by someone like me. Or... I might have encouraged other people to attack people, which also was would have been my message. And so I realized I'd, I'd potentially unleashed a lot of, not potentially, I had I had unleashed a lot of a lot of mixed messages that I needed to address. And so I said, you know, I'm going to start by completing this apology, and let's do a first blog post with the apology. And we sent that out yesterday, and there's been a lot of good reception. And then I'm going to follow it up with some other blogs where I try and 
correct what you're saying, Shai, which is there actually was a good message buried in in my miscommunication, and and I just need to package it better and and not be not not add on these stupid vague messages, but just actually talk to those points. And so I'm gonna follow it up in the next few weeks with some other blog posts. By the time this podcast is out, there will be some additional blog posts that should um, be saying what I was trying to say. So anyway, yeah. Just just one more note about that. Doing a talk which contains criticism of any uh, type is a very, very... It's like diffusing a bomb. You need to know which wires to cut and which uh, don't, uh, you shouldn't touch and uh, how to walk the thin line between making it... Passing the... the, the, the like, you know, what, what can be improved this message uh, without hurting specific people or pointing fingers or, you know, blaming. And, and it's very, very, a very delicate thing to do and very hard. And, uh, and, and th- like, that's basically, I realized how hard it, is it when I did the NGWA talk, which was basically the same thing. It was a lot of criticism and I needed to somehow wrap it in such a way that it wouldn't be hurtful. Uh, but funny, mm-hmm. and um, you did a great job at that. Th- thank you. But but the only way I could do it is by getting feedback from outsiders uh, that t- told me like, "Hey, this is too much, and this is m- might be hurtful. Maybe change that." Mm-hmm. You know, and and that's like one tip if anyone is listening to this and and thinking about like doing um, a talk like that in our community, which is a very, uh, very friendly community. And that's why I think you took, and also to, to say, to reiterate what I said in like closed chat, uh, the fact that you took uh, the measures and, and the steps you, you took, uh, Aaron, uh, shows that this is a sign of, of, of our like friendly community that you care so much about, you know, the messaging and how you said, because I think that, you know, there are other people who probably wouldn't think a lot about, you know, that and would just say, you know, close it with like a private, uh, ah, sorry, <laughs> you know, something like that. Uh, but obviously in the position you are and also the the, the, the careful person that you are, uh, that shows, that means a lot. So uh, thank you for writing that post, by the way. Yeah, I would second that. I think it was well done. Thank you. I, as I wrote, I had some friends review it and they're like, you're discounting your ideas. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'll address my ideas later. This, this is about trying to, this is about trying to say I'm sorry. This isn't about trying to share my message, you know? So right. I'll share that message later. It was the most important part of me wasn't getting the message right. It was fixed, like saying I'm sorry and letting everyone know, hey, you can't act like the way I acted. And so mm-hmm. I hope that I did that. That's all I know. Yeah, I, I think uh, I was there and I think the message was clear and the message was uh, don't go into herd mentality and follow the leaders and also a word of warning to the leaders. And with the leaders, I don't mention mean the persons that are Rob, Mike, and Ryan, uh, Mike, Ryan, and Robert, but uh, the community leaders, which are we all, we should not jump on every new thing and mm-hmm. pass it off as the next best thing sli- since sliced bread. Yeah. Because that is that is what we do a lot. What I see do, I don't do that personally. You yeah. you do, you do. I was going to say, really? You know? <laughs> I, I don't. If I do, shoot me. <laughs> oh, that's I see only. a shiny coat on there, but I'm like, ooh, nice. Play with <laughs> you this. Know what's, you know what's crazy <laughs> is um, of all the people in the Angular community, like Mike Ryan, I haven't talked as much to Brandon, but Mike has possibly the most, the most uh, stable point of view on state management in, uh-huh. in the Angular community. And he's like, don't use NGRX for everything, right? Right now. Yes. He's like, hey, use RX for a lot of it. Use yeah, NGRX talk- when it makes sense. And and yeah, um yeah. he has like a really good point of view. So like of all the people that 
I could have attacked if I was intentionally attacking people, which I wasn't. But if I, I mean, he's just one of the last because he's actually one of the people that's also trying to correct the usage. And he's trying to say, it's not ketchup. You don't use it on everything. Like you only use it where it makes sense. And, and even though he created, he's the one of the creators and maintainers, he has one of these super, I think, great points of view on like, it should coexist with other things. It shouldn't be the only thing in your tool stack for state management. And so just, just when you look at, and, and, and Rob and Brandon are certainly saying the same thing. They're all trying to say, Hey, everyone, don't use it for everything. Like, stop. Like it's, it's, it's good in this case. And another, other than that, like slow down. So I, I, I just, of all of the three people I could have been pointing at directly, they're just three of the last ones I would have been pointing at, yeah. unless yeah, you, it was the same. But by the way, by the way, also Dan Embermov, uh, from the beginning, he said like, hey, this Redux pattern didn't, haven't been that tested in like large scale apps yet. So don't jump and use it and say that this is like the, the end all be all solution. And, um, and also... So I think that the criticism, like when you say leaders, it was confusing because you could have said maybe like, you know, people like give example, like people like GDEs, people like, you know, uh, people who are influencer on Twitter, like, you know, give more general examples to, to show that you're not, you know, when you say leaders, it's obvious. And, and then you say like, you know, specific stuff about NGRX, like effects or stuff like that. Then you like it. Like people probably did like the one plus one, which you yeah. didn't intend to to yeah. you know that yeah. they will make. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I'm yeah. certainly not blaming anyone for understanding what I didn't mean because I think that that's the most obvious thing to understand, and it, that's a huge problem. So let's uh, unless anyone else has anything to say, I just I'm I just want to say thanks for the chance to re-extend an apology to everyone listening. So. So let's move on to observable forms with Sander Elias. So Sander, what's, what's observable forms and what's the matter with reactive forms that made you create observable forms? Let's talk about those two questions. Well, uh, reactive forms are, basically they force you to create your model three times over. One time uh, you're, you're creating your model with your data in on the back end or wherever you create it. Um, then you go into mimic it into in your uh, component or in your service. You're going to create a, a form group out of that, which mimics the exact form, exact model from your model, which sounds a little bit silly, but that's just what's happening. And then um, you put in those and then magic you have to do it strings. In the DOM. Yeah. Then you have to do it in the DOM, right? And then you have to do it in the DOM once more. Uh, and hook them up by magic strings. That's a lot of work yeah. with little to no gain at all. So, uh, um, so not everyone is as deep as you on this. So you, you just choose a lot of vernacular. That isn't, you, we lost a lot of people. So can you kind of peel that back a little bit? Like in reactive forms, I got to create my form three times. So yes. let's walk, can we walk through that? I'm, try, I'm chanting my inner shy resident, by the way, right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the first time you create your 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 data, uh, it's usually on your server. You collect the data and you send it out to the to the front end, usually in the form of a JSON, and it it ends up in the front end. And you are there. You already have the model, the data you you need to do in the form you need it. But then you need to copy this model, this form of the data that all the properties in inside a form group. So the first way is I have to get an array either from the server or I have to hard code it. And that array represents all the, the fields that will be eventually on the form. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you, you get an object with, which has all the, the properties in there, all the, the data, uh, all the fields okay. uh, with the field names, with the, uh, with the content of the fields. Um, so that's, that's kind of the first version of, of creating it three times. Okay, so I have an array one. that's like, hey, here's an array. It's got name, first name, you know, type input, right? Like, so I've got, I've got this thing, this array yeah. of fields that... Yeah, I've you have... The, the, uh, I'm, I'm not going as far as the array. I, I go for, for, for a single row 
in a single row, you, you create your, your model, like name, uh, first name is Aaron, last name is Frost, and so on, and so on, address, and you, you put in an address. Then you come into your uh, controller. Usually the, this is in the controller from your component. And then you go, okay, uh, new form group, uh, first name is form group, first name, and then you have to paste paste in the data in first name, and so on, and so on, and so on. So that's the second time. And, and to build the second time, you have already to, to do a lot of repetition. So for the second time, I just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. I have to take that row, as you called it, or like in my mind, it's an array, and I have to convert each of those things into a form control that goes into a form group. Yes. Okay, so now I've got to mutate those things into a form. Yes. All right, which is, and for those who don't know, form control and form group, these are classes provided by right. Angular that make doing form stuff easier, so... Okay, so, I, so, so now I've got two versions of the same thing. One that I got from the server that represents the forms we need to have on the screen. And then I have a form group version of the same thing. And now, what, now what's the third version? The third version is the template itself because you, you're still, uh, you are always going to need a template where you hook up the form group or the data to the, uh, to the view. So there you create a form and you go over all properties once more and you say input uh, form control name is magic string for first name uh, and do that for every property in there. So that's basically the third time. Um, well, so, I have, so I have three things that represent the same thing as what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. And you have to do a lot of um, repetition to get there. You are repeating the, the name of every property at least three to four times before mm -hmm. it's on the screen. And it has to match up, right? And they have to match up. There is a magic connection in there. And if you make a typo, you don't get any errors, but you get a form that is right. not working at all. And there's no type checking on that, right? I mean, it's not and like there the compiler is going to, right? Indeed, there is also no type checking there, which is also a problem. Right. There's no type checking because you're doing it through the form, right? Like you kind of, you stepped out of TypeScript the second you went through the Angular template, right? That's right. Not, not entirely true because um, in my form module, you do have type checking. Actually, in the, uh, in the HTML, you do have type checking. You have uh, input type is number, input type is date, input type is string, input type is email. Those are types. That's true. That's true. So... I understand how I create these reactive forms. I hope the listeners understand how you create a reactive form. There's three versions of the same thing. If you're using if you're using form builder, the second thing, the second version isn't as hard, and the last one's using an ng4. But anyway, I always find myself looking at the docs every time I need to create a form. A hundred percent, I agree. So how is, <laughs> yeah. how is observable forms easier? Do not need three versions. Like what is it? Well, if you use observable forms, um, you use basically plain HTML forms, the, the way you are using them in HTML uh, without any framework. Um, and you add a couple of directives to the form element, and the directives are uh, observable because it's an observable form. And there is a fill form directive that takes a JSON, an object with the data and maps that to the inputs that are there. So I still have to define the form in the template. I'm hooking them all by the standard uh, attribute of uh, name. So there is an uh, input name, first name, and an input name is last name. And that way it hooks up to the, to the object. So it's not dynamically creating these, the template for you, right? You still got to write the code for the template? And th this is the first iteration. Uh, it doesn't do it dynamically. Uh, okay. You can use dynamic stuff, but the thing about it that, about doing it dynamically, it's not that simple because you need then more than just these properties. You also need an sure. uh, you you basically dynamically is data driven forms, and this is not really aimed at data driven forms. Yeah, okay. there's more. Um, what do you call the the library which does like the automatic forms? 
formally, uh, formally, yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Form, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Formally does data driven forms and it does that quite well. Yeah. Um, so if that's your cup of tea, yeah, you should go go look at formally. It's formally like, and just for those listening, because that is pretty enticing to say, ah, I'm bailing out on all this craziness. Is formally as powerful on like the validation side and everything? Because the yes. reactive form stuff and the ver- observable form stuff is pretty sweet because of the validation. I, 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 from what I saw, I like the the team behind formally. I think they do a good job and, and it's very, a very thorough solution. I didn't like uh, have a lot of experience with that, like uh, with uh, lots of complex uh, validation scenarios. But from what I saw, I didn't find a missing link there that uh, I could say, oh, this is a problem in the future or something like that. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's more for data driven. But for a long time, it was like a simpler solution for just like configuring a form because again, you don't have to again and again and again look at the docs to right. try and figure out the insanity of like trying to yeah put some inputs together you know so. yeah um so sorry and i realize this isn't supposed to be about formally but i know people are going to want to know does it allow me to reuse like the built-in validators and the same validation system that comes with angular or no if i recall it correctly yes it's uh, i think it's even using uh reactive forms under the hood oh okay yeah so this is a cool. four angular product yeah it's it's on top of angular Oh yeah, cool. All right. If if you are looking for data driven forms, there are. This is one of the solutions. Um, there are multiple available. I think um, Jerry Strunkfolder did a blog post on how to create your own database driven forms. Also, hey, are you working on a complex enterprise Angular application? Angular Bootcamp is an intensive three-day workshop class to learn the basics of Angular through sophisticated techniques for real-world applications. They update the class regularly for the most current Angular, and a lot of the curriculum is also relevant to older versions. Or you can go beyond the three-day class with help from Oasis Digital, the team behind Angular Bootcamp. They can assist your team or launch your project, including scalability, data flow, state management, service architecture, full-stack product design, and a ton more. Or you can contact them for a private class at your location or attend public classes in cities around the U.S. and occasionally in Europe. Online live instructor training is also available at angularbootcamp.com. So let's say, I mean, if I'm, if I'm building an app today and, I mean, Jerry is also obviously super smart as well. I've got Ward Bell, who's wicked smart, saying, hey, if you're doing anything besides template forms, you're crazy, Right. Which I don't understand, but that's that's Ward. We've got a lot of people who are saying, dude, just use reactive forms because it's amazing. And then <clears throat> and you got your formulas out there. So Sander, I guess let us hear your pitch for why would anyone use observable forms? Like tell us why is it better. And if you can do it in a song, that's not <laughs> <laughs> It'll scare away all of your listeners. So I'm not going to do singing now. I, I need to Warm up before, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I need to warm up and, and do push-ups and, and stuff like that and, and lose like 20 kilo, ki- kilograms. Yeah, woo, woo, woo. But um, the reason why you would use this is the simplicity of use. You just pull in the data, uh, hook it up to a normal looking form that you know already from before any framework. It's just an HTML form. There is a safe, uh, safe directive that just puts out the data that is changed. Also under the hood, it's fully observable. If you want to have um, a real observable form, you can grab the form data observable and it gets updated on every change in the form. Um, You can even grab single fields if you want. Which is even better than uh, reactive forms, right? Yes. Reactive forms has some weaknesses on that. It's easier to interface with. uh, it has a unified output for all kinds of inputs you have can have all available. Um, mm. Also, if you put in a datum, if you put in a date selector, you get a date out. If you put in a number selector, you get a number out. If you put in a checkbox, you get a boolean out typed, mm. and that's not available inside that, the React. That's powerful because. because- 
just to be clear for the listeners, because everything in reactive forms is just going to come back as a string. Is that right, Sander? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. And I, I ran into some scenarios when I was doing react forms where, um, like, I was expecting it to be reactive, like unidirectional, and I actually had to pull for the data to get the data back out, and I was really bothered. Mm-hmm. So, were you having a fully observable? Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sure what I was using, but I just remember being like, "That's not reactive. Like this is this is not cool." So, listening to Sanders say it actually takes the form and makes it fully reactive makes me happy because I remember being really bothered that I didn't have a reactive form, even though no, was there is logical reactive forms. There is a way to get some observables from the reactive for, uh, forms. Uh, mm-hmm. You can subscribe to the value changes, but. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a little bit cumbersome to work with, and there are so, some nooks and crannies that are just unpleasant. Um, and it's a very large API surface, right? Yeah, it's just a very large. The, yeah, just grokking all of that is, is difficult, especially as you get, you know, you're starting with Angular. Yeah. Well, now, I, are you guys I referring you a- to the value, the value control accessors that like Jennifer Wadella talked about at ng-conf? Is that what you're talking about? That's part of it. Yes. Yep, that's part of it. But in general, it's the I think it's called the abstract form control class that has a lot of this on it. Yeah. Um, gotcha. I think my entire library is 5K. Okay. So, Sandra, do me a favor. When we started this, we were like, hey, reactive forms, you got to create this, the same thing three times. I want to kind of do that kind of same steppy, steppy step for observable forms, okay? So I still got to do the first step where I go to the server and I get the list of fields I need to display. True? Yeah, true. Okay. And then it sounds like to me what you're saying is you've merged the last two things together or you've changed them to where they're only partly necessary. So describe the second step. The second step is uh, create an HTML form with um, basically... So just a regular form, just just the form tag. Yeah, just a form tag with inputs and, and whatever you need, just plain HTML. Okay. Um, okay. The only thing to note is that you will use the name attribute to hook up to your data. So if you de- in the data your property is called formal name, that's the name you put in the HTML. In the name, in the name property. Name on the formal, HTML. Yeah, okay. in the name attribute. When you have done creating this form, um, you add uh, a form fill directive, and that makes sure that all the data flows into this thing. Also, it's fully, fully immutable. So whatever you put in will never be changed. The output of the mm-hmm. form is a new object with only the changes the user made. And does the directive go on the form tag, or are we putting... On the form tag. Like, okay. Yep. That was, I had the same question. So I'm putting that... What's, what's the name of the directive? Fill form. Fill form. form. Okay. You, put that, you put that directive onto the form tag. Yeah. You put in the data uh, with or without an async pipe, and that's it. So the, and that's, okay. kind of what the, that's kind of the flux capacitor of this thing that kind of makes, makes this all possible? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's the, the, the data in part. Actually, there are, two par- there are two parts of this. There is extracting the data out of the form, which is a data flow, and that creates an observable uh, that observable mimics the the shape and structure of the form, right? No, the shape and structure of your original data. Okay. Uh, the only difference is it is only filled with changes. All fields that are pristine or not touched are undefined. Okay. So you're you're still tapping into the ng dirty, ng pristine. Nope. Like you're not tapping into those classes anymore. Nope. You've rewritten that. I didn't need to because uh, HTML already provides all those things. Okay. And that just comes, I think, Aaron, that comes out of the box with the ng form directive, which automatically, as soon as you bring in the forms module, which I assume you need for this, right, Sander? As soon as you no. bring that in. Yeah, you, know, you, need the you, observable need... Form, you need the observable form module. You bring in the observable, ng observable form module and you're done. Okay, so okay. you're not using the built-in forms module that comes with Angular? Nope. Interesting, mm-hmm. okay. It's a full rewritten forms module from scratch. 
because I was so fed up with the, the current state of affairs that I said, there must be a better way, so I created it. But could I, if I wanted to, can I mix and match? Can I bring in the forms module because I want that NG form directive? And like Aaron was just talking about, like the NG pristine, NG valid, NG invalid, those classes that get applied? Or, um, or no, but this is a complete departure. Well, it's a complete departure, and I will tell you why. Um, okay. You already have valid uh, and invalid CSS selectors in HTML already. Why okay. would you bring in an, an extra set? So you, we already have pseudo selectors, right? For valid. We all, yeah, exactly. Yep. So, but what, what do we have? Dirty ones? Is there a dirty pseudo selector? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't. I, I'm not I aware of so. that. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, or touched. Or um, touched. I don't. There, there is not, but you don't need it because you can look at your data, and only change data is filled in in the in the object like, that you get back. Right. Exactly. So but you know I, what is pristine or not pristine. But if I like, like, let's say the value is currently foo. And then I change it to foo and, a, and an A at the end, and I delete the A back off. So it's back to foo again. So that might look to the untrained eye untouched, but technically that's been touched, even though it's- That's still, not pristine anymore. Yeah, it's not pristine. That's not there. pristine anymore, so it will be in the data. Will. Yeah. If you reset the data, everything will be go, go back to the way it was before your user start touching it. Gotcha. That's a departure from the. That's one departure I, I took from the original HTML forms, because if you hit the cancel button on a normal uh, form, it clears it clears the entire form, which is a stupid thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Huh. I'd have to play around with this to see how much I love it. So one another question as I'm as I'm looking at this, if I'm on a project and I am, and I've got reactive forms, which I do and I'm trying to look for something that sounds better, what you're saying. Um, one of the things I'm worried about is I've written, I've, a lot of people have invested a lot of time into their validations that are in the reactive forms modules and stuff. So can I reuse my validations or do I have to rewrite them to work with what you've written? Um, the thing is I have not had the time yet to, uh, to create validations and I will not create validations because I'm looking at a way to just put in the validation results back into the template. So you can bring your own validation engine. If you like what Angular gives you, you can use that. If you like, for example, uh, how is it called? Uh, Joy validations, you can use that. If you want to roll your own validations, you can do that. And my, mm -hmm. my observable form will just provide a way so you can uh, return the validation results to the, to the view. Gotcha. So that's, maybe, that's not there yet. I, I need help and I need help with, with this because uh, I have thought about it and, and this is the way to go because then you are validating your data and your model, which is what you should be validation in the first time. Uh, that also enables you to share the validation between the front end and the back end for real. This leads to another question that I had. Is it production ready? Like uh, the project use it in production? I have used it in a couple of things. Um, aside from validations, it, it is production ready, yeah. Okay. And do you have documentation available for this? So that way, if people want to get started with this, they've got a way to kind of learn and, and figure it out? Well, basically, there is the MDN documentation about HTML forms, which still holds. That works. All of that works. I still need to do a, do a little bit of more documentation on how to hook up the things. Um, I have samples available. If you look at my ng, uh, ng conf talk about it, I go into mm -hmm. uh, every, not into every aspect of it, but I show off most of it. And actually, it's it's quite simple to use. It's not it was yeah. not simple for me to write, but the 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 AP surface is is small. The way to use it is is easy. So there is not that much to document. I'm imagining a a project where. I'm trying to train my team on how to use forms where I just can send them to MDN and what you're selling sounds really cool. I'm not going to lie. Like um, if that was a thing, Angular all of a sudden has possibly the easiest forms engine of all. And yeah. I can use some help on this to make it complete. 
this could be a shout out to anyone listening. There will be a link. Please send or put a link to it in the in the chat here. And uh, if anyone is interested in helping out in docs and just testing it out, and uh, if you are frustrated with your current uh, form solution, uh, help Sander and help us all to get a better and easier form solution. So how could how could <clears throat> Talk to you, Sander. If, if, if let's say someone wants to help, I know there's a lot of people eager to help. There is a GitHub for, uh, repo for this. Go there, or contact me via uh, via Twitter. DM What's me. What's your Twitter handle? Azo Sander Elias. I share What's it. your uh, home home address? <laughs> yeah, my home address. Uh, social um, security. Yeah, and uh, something in Tel Aviv, I believe. In Tel Aviv. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. what's your a uh, pet pet's name. What's the name of your first pet? <laughs> <laughs> My first pet. What, what street yeah, did you grow up on? I'm, I'm using I'm using a password, random password generator. So, <laughs> what was the name of your favorite dog or favorite sport? <laughs> Aaron, I think. Aaron, oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, it's a good name. Well, Sander, Sander, thanks for uh, letting us uh, drill in on you on your Azure forms. It sounds promising. A world where Angular forms could be as simple as writing HTML. That I think cool. any any front end JavaScript framework that sounds almost too good to be true. But if you could deliver on that, that would be amazing. I I can deliver on it. Would. If I can fully deliver on on this, if someone would say, "Hey, I will go pay a couple of months of your time," I can finish it up completely. I, mm. I've been building on this thing for for a couple of months for for like eight months in my spare time. Wow. And I don't have a lot of spare time. Wow. Mm -hmm. If someone says, hey, I'm going to pay for a couple of months of your time, uh, I can make this thing completely work with everything I, I just talk, talked about, hmm. including Some documentation. Validators, validators and everything? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, the validation part seems critical. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah that's why I, I delayed that a little bit uh, on purpose because I wanted to make sure I got that right. And I think the, the right mm -hmm. way to do is basically uh, have the developer bring their own validate, validation engine mm -hmm. and just give them a way to easily hook the validation results up to the view. Mm -hmm. uh, for the validation results, I'm actually really thinking about reusing the structure Angular does, like uh, an object with the, the field name and then the error message, if there is any, mm -hmm. and hook hook that back up into the form. Is there any way that you could l just leverage the existing validation that's in Angular Framework or in the forms yes, module? Or no? Yeah, that is reusable. That would be right. awesome. That yeah, would be could, awesome. If I could just write async validators and validators like we've already got. And you can do yeah. whatever you want and because this is really no, observable. So uh, whatever you do, if sync, async, it doesn't really matter. You just provide the results and the, the view gets updated. Bye, bye, cool. bye. That's you, cool. say instinct, you said instinct, right? Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask, what's the current licensing model? Let's talk I mean, you're not, are you charging for this? I assume it's free, right? Yeah, it is free. It's MIT. Cool. MIT. 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 Right. Yes. MIT. Yep. So, okay. Um, I think that is, uh, uh, that's kind of, let's just kind of call it a wrap there. If anyone you want to reach out to Sander, have questions, find him on Twitter, uh, come to the show notes, and we'll have a link to his repo also as well. So also as well included. This episode is brought to you by TripleByte. Applying to programming jobs sucks. You have to put the right keywords in your resume. You spend hours and hours on the phone screens and take home projects. And that's assuming the company even responds to your application. Well, if you're a software engineer, TripleByte can help. They work with over 400 top tech companies from big names like Dropbox and Adobe to exciting startups. You do one brief online interview with them, and if you do well, you go straight to final interviews with the company on their platform. It's like the common app for software developers. TripleByte does not look at your resume or where you went to school. All they care about is if you can code. I've helped dozens of software developers with various credentials get jobs, and this looks like a terrific way for you to get in and get interviewed and get a job without a lot of the hassle and overhead. You can go check them out at triplebyte.com angular. That's triplebyte.com, byte as in eight bits. 
As a special offer for listeners of this show, if you take a job through Triple Byte, they'll offer you a $1,000 signing bonus. Okay, let's move on to the picks portion. Uh, anyone want to start with picks? Shy? Oh, uh, I, I have a couple of picks. No, no, Sander, oh. don't no, take no, my spot. I'm, I'm the guest. I go first because That's otherwise you'll <laughs> you mine. I, I, I know you. Oh. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Okay, I'm you know saying. what? Observable Forms is a stupid name, and go ahead. Okay, pick your <laughs> I'm so glad you find that stupid name. <laughs> I, I dare you to come up with something more rich this week. Yeah, rich yeah uh, not, not Promise Forms, okay? How's that? <laughs> not <laughs> Promise form. Yeah, no Promise. No Promises Forms. Yeah, that yeah. might be catchy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> my, my, my picks are basically the NG Conf talks uh, on YouTube. I think that's a great pick. God great damn pick. it. God damn it. That's yeah. what I was going to Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I wanted to be first for a reason. I know you guys. Um, <laughs> then I think the, the new decorators proposal in TC39 is a, a nice pick to look at. Yes. Can, can you share a link to that in the, in the chat here? Um, I will, but I have to look it up. And I will yeah. come back to you when for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're done. Yeah, when I'm done. Um, then I have a Segura's network around our preloading block. Segura is our Japanese uh, Angular GDE, and he did a nice blog about network aware preloading, which is a pretty good blog. It's not too long, so you can do that in read that in 10 to 15 minutes. Can you tweet that and then also share the link in the show notes? I yeah, I will do that. Yeah. Cool. And the final pick is that. Angular 8 is near. Yay. Yeah, it is. It's almost here, huh? Yeah, it's on. Yeah. yeah. Release go, candidate, go. right? Yeah. Optional AIV, differential loading, native import support. I think the latest one is, is the one I like the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, you got any more picks or should we go on to the no. next person? Okay. Go ahead. I know Shai wants to go next, so I'm going to go instead of him. Um, uh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna pick. Uh, I haven't in, enjoyed like laughing and just been so thoroughly content during a talk that I witnessed live since Shy's NG Watt talk. Um, but at NG Conf, I finally, it finally, I finally got a chance to feel that kind of enjoyment and just completely fulfilled. Johanna Pierce gave a talk yeah. called AS Regular, and it was so good. Uh, do the amount of laughing and witty humor and I just couldn't have been more impressed by Johanna and I think everyone needs to go watch that talk I'll put it in the show notes it's called AS for Angular if you just want to check it out on YouTube just brilliant like mm, it's one of the best things that the Angular community has come up with in a while is this talk so everyone go check it out and I also want to call out just uh, one of the people I met at NGConf she was a speaker. Her name is Melina Mejia. She's kind of devoting most of her free time to helping underprivileged people learn how to program, which is one of the most charitable things I've heard of an adult doing. And we were able to raise a lot of money to donate to her cause. If anyone wants to donate to this group in, in Colombia, um, reach out to her on Twitter, Melina Mejia. She's absolutely an impressive member of the Angular community. So those are my two picks, mm -hmm. Melina and Johanna's talk, A is for Angular. Can you still donate to that through the NG Conf? Because I know at the conference yeah. we were able to do that or no. I'll put a, a link in the show notes. If you want to donate through NG Conf's website, yeah, you, yeah, you can definitely do that. Cool. Uh, so Brian, you got some picks? Because I know Shai wants to go, so we'll have you go next. Come on, man. <laughs> You know, definitely NGConf was awesome. So uh, Sanders, right. The videos are amazing. I've been spending the last week just going back and watching the videos that I didn't have a chance to uh, see live in person. And I just love the community and the technology and everything that was shared at the conference. So, uh, so NGConf is definitely my first pick. And part of that, I want to call out um, a colleague of mine, uh, Reed Villeneuve, who gave his first talk in front of hundreds of people. Um, and I know he was a little nervous, but I thought he did a really good job. And, oh, he did a fantastic um, so, job. 
Yeah. So I'm just really proud of him for, for getting up there and for doing it. And, uh, you know, he's just a, he's a great colleague and he's just a fun dude to work with. So, so that's kind of my, my first and two picks. And then this is probably a classic pick, but I got to go see, uh, the Avengers Endgame movie, uh, last week and dude, so good. Pretty good. So good. Didn't you see it? No. Oh, oh you see it. Yeah. I saw it in game. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Endgame. Yeah. I'm not paying attention. Yeah. I've, I've, I watched it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've yeah. seen it together. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Sander is like, what do you mean you haven't seen it? <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Cool, that's all I got. Okay. Shy, you don't have anything, so... Um, Wrap it up. Let's, yeah, let's just call and the show. We're out of time, huh? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Shy. <laughs> I have a, an unpick. I want to unpick... The Avengers Endgame, sorry, Brian. <laughs> because no, because I saw it and yeah, it it's not I don't know. I I love the 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 one like the last one, but I really didn't connect to this one, so that's me. But Do you like anyway, Infinity War? Yeah, yeah I really like so Infinity sense. War. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but hey, if it's your thing, uh, go go and see it. And uh, <laughs> and uh, okay, so my picks are NGConf and um, no <laughs> and uh, Joanna's talk and um, no no. So no, my, okay. My picks is are first of all the Google I/O talks. Uh, Everything under Google Chrome Developers, I will put a link here. Uh, is is like they have a lot of like web assembly for web developers and what's new in JavaScript and what's new in Chrome and the web and lots of stuff. Also, our boy Steven Fluen talked there, and uh, so shout out to Steven. And um, Very cool. uh, so this cha- this like channel also a great talk they had on a different channel on Google Developers Channel with uh, uh, Professor Michio Kaku on the future of humanity, which is was mind blowing. Uh, lots of futuristic theories and stuff like that. So very very recommended. I will put the link to that as well. And my last pick is a website called Sixteen Personalities which is a short test that by the end of it, you get your like personality type and it says a lot about your pros and cons and your shows you your blind spots. And so it helped me a lot to figure out what I'm not that good at and stop feeling, stop blaming myself uh, for that and start like looking for solution to how to, you know, uh, fix my blind spots or my downsides or stuff like that. So that's uh, very recommended. So it's 16personalities.com. And those are our picks. Cool. Awesome. Everybody, thanks for watching um, or listening. Thanks for tuning in. And we will catch up to you next time. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more.